You're in tune with Stained Glass Radio on North Sound to 10.35 a.m. and DAB Digital Radio and also going out to Stornoway and the Western Isles on Isles FM 103 FM. Well, all over the world today, you'll come across people who claim to be born-again Christians. What does the phrase born-again mean? And what makes these people think they can describe themselves that way? What difference is there, if any, between a born-again Christian and just the ordinary flavour? And what does the Bible have to say about it? Well, on the line to answer these questions, and some others too, delighted to have with us tonight, pastor of Childs Hill Baptist Church London, Gary Brady. And Gary has just published a new book uh, on uh, Evangelical Press called What the Bible Says About Being Born Again. Gary, welcome to Stained Glass Radio. Thanks very much. Gary, uh, most of uh, our listeners have heard the phrase, I'm sure, born again. Where does the phrase actually come from, first of all? Well, the the phrase itself uh, is in the Bible. It's particularly used in John chapter 3, where uh, Jesus has an interview with a a rabbi called Nicodemus. And that's really where it comes from, although it is used in all sorts of uh, different ways today. Uh, despite that, and uh, my uh, my aim in the book is really to get back to what what the phrase originally meant, the phrase as Jesus uses it. The, the, probably we hear it most, I would imagine, from the, the other side of the pond, from the United States. Isn't that so? Any idea of why that might be? Well, uh, the whole history of uh, America is uh, one that's that's been very much stamped by uh, Christian teaching, uh, and so I think that's uh, that's an element there. Um, it's something like 70, 80 million Americans claim to be born again. Um, and uh, so I would guess that uh, what's happened is that the word's taken on a life of its own, which, which these phrases tend tend to do. And so you, you hear about um, born-again Mormons and born-again Muslims and born-again, uh, well, born-again atheists. That's the, uh, <laughs> I think it was Gaurav- Yes, I've heard that one Gaurav- too. Vidal that uh, coined the phrase, I'm a born-again atheist. And I think... <laughs> What he means by that is that I'm a great enthusiast yeah. uh, for atheism, is, is what he's saying. And I think uh, the be, be, because people have used the word to try and differentiate themselves from you know, Christian in the sense of a sort of nominal Christian, they've uh, tried to say, well, I'm a born-again Christian. Uh, and that's given rise to the idea that there are sort of various sorts of Christian for a start, that there are born-again Christians and just your ordinary common or garden Christian, which... Which again, really, is 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 not helpful because uh, I think what the Bible teaches is that you know, if you're born again, you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you're born again. But um, in an effort to try and uh, clarify things, I think the the waters have been muddied, and then other people have taken up the phrase. And so when they say they're born again, they mean they're enthusiastic or committed. They've they've had some experience. You get um, pop songs that talk about being born again, describing uh, falling in love, uh, and so. Uh, emphasis has shifted really from what uh, the original phrase meant. Well that was actually, I was going to touch on that in just a second. Can all can all people who claim to be Christians also claim to be born again simply because they've been baptised and they believe in Jesus Christ? Yeah, that's a good question. If you truly are a Christian, if you, you really are a believer, uh, then whether you're conscious of it or not, then you, you must have been born again. Uh, the, 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 the two things go together. Um, now, it's possible, of course, to, to think you are a Christian when you're not. Um, and uh, similarly, it's possible to think you've been born again, uh, even though that's not the case. But certainly, to try and uh, equate being born again with, with, with baptism or church membership or, or something like that uh, is to confuse things and yet the churches do that, don't they? Sadly, yes. It, I mean, uh, the Church uh, of England and the, and the Church of Scotland, to, the, to a similar extent, believe that uh, when you baptise a baby, you, it's actually rebirth. I heard we had a temporary minister recently who said, uh, uh, well, uh, when you baptise a baby, the Holy Spirit enters the baby, she said. Yeah, that is a common uh, belief amongst uh, uh, Anglicans, and I'm sure Church of Scotland similarly. And... Um, the, the difficulty there again is, you know, what what do they mean when they say that? And uh, you know, given that that's what's in the uh, the prayer books and so on, uh, people understand it in different ways. So that 
you know, even some will say, well, that there is there's two sorts of regeneration or two sorts of being born again. They try and get around it that way, uh, or there's, they, they call it presumptive regeneration. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that uh, now, if we're baptizing a, a baby, then we're presuming that that uh, baby is going to become a Christian, and uh, therefore we presume that the baby is being born again. There's some big presumptions going it, on there, aren't there? It is a big presumption. Now, I'm a, I'm a Baptist uh, and an independent myself, so uh, I, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't accept infant baptism anyway. But I recognize that there are you know, many good Christians that do, and uh, they've obviously got a, uh, got a difficulty there. They've got to decide what they, what they are actually doing when they, they baptize uh, the baby. And I know there are different understandings. Uh, of, of what exactly is going on there, but I think I, I, I don't think any anybody who's read his New Testament and believes it is going to say that simply by putting water on somebody at whatever age it is is going to make that person born again. Uh, it, it can't be the case. It's not anything that we do, and it's not anything that's outside of us that makes us born again. It, it has to be something that God does. It has to be something that happens within. Why is it so important, though, uh, first of all, that that the individual is born again, that the Christian is born a born-again Christian? Well, I think it's clear from Scripture that uh, the only way into heaven is, is by being born again. Um, I'm not sure who said this, but uh, it's been put like this, and I think it, it's quite helpful, uh, that everybody is either born once and dies twice, or they're born twice... Uh, and they die once. Um, now that might sound more of a conundrum than it uh, that it is at first. Uh, obviously, we're all born the first time. That, that that's straightforward. Uh, now those who are born again, uh, they they obviously are going to die. We all die, but once they die, they enter into heaven. Uh, whereas those who are not born for the second time, not born again, uh, they not only die like we all do, but there's such a thing as the second death that the Bible. Uh, speaks about, uh, and clearly that's uh, something that we all want to avoid. Uh, and so I think that uh, it is pretty clear from Scripture that if you're not born again, uh, then th- there's no future, there's no there's no hope for you. And so nothing could be more vital. I think it's it's absolutely vital. Well, um, as you said, it's something that the second death, uh, which mentioned is mentioned in the Bible, is something we all want to avoid. Um, but um, it's not something that the individual has any say in really is it i mean it's not something that uh, being born again is not something that you can you can consciously strive for or can you well no no i think that there is there's some confusion you know but because jesus says you must be born again a lot of people take that saying oh well we must be able to do something about it and therefore we 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 we, we need to uh, act on that and uh, and make ourselves born again but but in fact that the picture that jesus is using uh, the picture of, of birth uh, clearly went, went, you know, in the case of being born in the first place, it's not something we choose to do. It's something that happens to us. Now, I don't think that should breed complacency because uh, regeneration, being born again, that's not the only thing that the Bible teaches. Jesus' message and, and, and the message that came uh, before is to repent, which is to turn from your sins and to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I think, I mean, that, that's the message, really, that we want to, to, to preach, let people know then that they need to uh, turn from their sins, turn from all that's displeasing to God, and, and to trust in the Saviour, to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that presumably would make them more fit to be born again. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's the way some people see it. But in fact, uh, I think if you read carefully in the New Testament, you can't actually believe, you can't actually repent, unless, first of all, God changes you uh, within. Right. Uh, now, there, there is a conundrum there. There's a, uh, a difficulty in you say, well, you know, I can't do anything then. Uh, but I think, I, I think uh, there's a tendency to, to, to draw false conclusions uh, sometimes. We, we get the biblical data and then we try and uh, rely on our own logic to work it out. Um, whereas, in fact, I, I think it is very plain that, 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 we, that we're urged on the one hand to, uh, to do everything we can that we might be saved. But, in the end, it's only God that can do it. Now, I think when, once, you, once you're in, it makes a bit more sense. When you look back, you say, well, yes, I did believe, I did repent. It was me that did it. 
but I never could have done it unless God had enabled me to do it.